Welcome to my docu series on the 1959 Fender Deluxe, the tweed version. Why does the tube chart state 110 volts at 50 or 60 hertz? There's a reason for that. So we always have to go back to the date the amp was built and understand what were the specifications, what was the technology that was available, what did it recommend in engineering codes and other standards. Back then, in 1959, there were none of the conveniences you take for granted today. Things like safety. If something happened to you, quite frankly, there weren't lawyers and consumer protection laws to take care of you. That is a recent modern uh, luxury, if you will. Back then, you know, didn't happen. Sorry, but that's all we can do for you. So the amp is uh, designed for 110 volts at 50 or 60 cycles. At 110 volts, it means it will be at least 100 volts AC. It will operate starting at, it's guaranteed to start operating at 100 volts. I use the word guarantee because it doesn't say that in any literature, but the standard of the day says you have to deliver 100 volts or more but designed for 110. The late 1930s, the accepted standard voltage was increased to 115 volts. Doesn't mean everyone got it. It just means it should be there. If you're going to install something new, build a new house, so on and so forth, designed for 115 volts. That meant the transition from 110 to 115 volts had started. It will take literally decades to move everybody up to that because there's a lot of us in the United States and houses and buildings and all that. What the first house I lived in with 115 volts was in 1968. Let's see, 1930, we can all move to 115 volts, but I didn't see 115 volts in the house circuit until 1968. It takes time. In the 1970s, ANSI C84.1 included a maximum deviation from the standard voltage, and that was plus or minus 5%. So it takes a while for that to get along. So before that, you need to be 100 volts, you can be a little bit more. 115 volts, you can go down, but it could be, it will be well outside plus or minus 5%. So at least that came about in 1984. Uh, the 1970s. In 1984, the load calculations used to design new equipment, new appliances, uh, building new apartments, buildings, so on and so forth. They say design for 120 volts. Grid systems, uh, grounding, uh, wire sizing, uh, motor winding, everything. Everything will be designed for 120 uh, volts. The importance of that point is when this amp was built was in 1959, so it was designed for 110 volts. Not everyone had that. They probably were somewhere much below that. 100 volts or more, this amp should work, but it doesn't mean they had 110 volts. But it wasn't designed for 115 or 120 volts. Today, the spec is 120 volts plus or minus 5%. I'm sure there's places in the United States where that isn't present. They're probably still at 115, possibly 117, and they're creeping up. The rest of us, where I live, are at 120 volts, and there are days I'm, I can meter 123 volts. The idea is to move to 125 volts throughout the United States, in which case there will be another meeting in the mines, because back in, uh, at the end of World War II, there was a decision to be made. Europe went to the 220 route, and the United States stayed at the 110 volt route. That means we have to transmit on the grid systems uh, more amperage for the same voltage where the Europeans found out that at 220, the, you can use uh, lighter gauge wire at less amperage to deliver the same amount of power. 
So they are ahead of us. Will we eventually get to 220? I don't know, but once we hit 125, uh, if everything from the 1930s to now uh, continue that trend, they'll move the voltage up again. These were the fuses back then, 1959, and they were still common through the United States and throughout the 1960s. The, the National Electric Code uh, didn't require grounded receptacles. You know, you got two prongs, uh, neutral, hot, and the ground. That wasn't a thing until 1968, and it took decades for houses to rewire for that. It's expensive. So, wiring in the 50s, 60s, and the 70s. So, on the left is a common everyday house uh, fuse panel. Notice it's got the fuses that screw in. And when they pop, you can see, at least uh, on these, you could tell it would go black. It'd be a black, you blow it, the fuse blows, you get this, uh, it'll blacken the glass. You can visually tell the, which fuse blew. But in the house, uh, the, the, the wiring from the, the main poles in the backyard came to the house and into the house here at this block. And the block then fed 110 volts to each of these uh, fuse sockets, the porcelain with the screw-in fuse. Notice there's no main disconnect here. So what would happen if you blew off fuse? Well, back then, uh, you would take the fuse out, you bounce a penny on it, and then you quickly put it back in there and screw it down, and that will return that circuit for the lights for maybe the TV back on until Dad had time to go down to the hardware store and get a new fuse. Essentially, uh, there's no fuse. <laughs> you stuck a penny in there. Most of the time, when you undid the fuse, the penny would drop out, and you can put the uh, good fuse in and then continue. Safety? Hmm wasn't as prevalent back then as it is now today and they, these things need to be replaced out but even in 1972 I had a house that actually lived in a house we rented a house that actually still had this it's uh, expensive to rewire you put in a new circuit panel with the, uh, circuit breakers and nowadays AGC uh, or GFI GFIAs you know the drill. That's expensive. They don't come cheap. And then you have to rewire the house. You've got to put new sockets in, so on and so forth. It requires money. So the thinking is eventually these things retire. I don't know if anyone actually still has a fuse panel like that. I don't go looking around, but I've not encountered one of these for quite some time. I hope if you have one, you're deciding to get it replaced. And yeah, not a good day. So why is 50 or 60 cycles AC listed? Well, it, U.S. Southern California uh, had standardized on 50 hertz. Fender in Fullerton, California was being supplied electricity by the Southern California Edison who were at 50 hertz. They didn't switch over to 60 hertz until 1948. Why not switch our, the, our design of our amps to 60 hertz only? Because Mexico is a, still a big market for these amps. Mexico was still at 50 hertz, and they didn't switch to 60 hertz until the 1970s. So clear up through the 70s and probably into the 80s, you'll still find power transformers which are rated 50 or 60 cycles so that the consumer market can purchase these. You can't run a 60 cycle transformer down at 50 hertz. You, another day, another video, but that's the reason why. It's a dual uh, purpose on the 50, 60 hertz. 50 if you got it, 60 if you have it. Uh, otherwise, you're limiting your potential sales to just the US, and Mexico is still buying amps. So that's because of the market, why they went 50 or 60 hertz. Next up, I'm going to uh, go through starting a vintage amp. Thank you for watching.